Hey everyone, this is Seven Thunders, and this is Growth for Survival. Um, this is a shot of my toy and decorative growth fish pond and meditation pond. In my backyard, this is August, um, like the third week, August 23rd or so. And this is a biological pond. I've planted plants to um, take care of the nit nitrates and nitrites in the water. I have a moving bee bed filter over there in the garage. And there's a boxy trickle filter in the garage. And there's another boxy trickle filter hidden and painted camouflage back in that corner over there. I can zoom in. But I have two boxy trickle filters, a moving bed filter that's my compost pile, and the filter is really well camouflaged back up in there. But never mind that. This is the update on my aquaponics. Um, experiments and endeavors. That is a biological stream bed. It's about 12 feet long or so from where the water comes in. And these are all collected boulders right here. Off of Friends properties up north. And our property. from the roadside. The boulders have fallen to the road. But this is a real um, budget pond, done very economically. I dug it by hand. It's 21 by 14 feet or so. That's a Yamabuki Ogon right there. That's over 20 inches long. When I bought it two years ago, I could hardly see it. It was about three inches. And when I put it in the pond, I thought it had disappeared or one of the tilapia that used to be in there ate it or something. But then it showed up later. Now it's like huge. Um, I like how that looks over there. The side of the rocks go down in the pond is one of my favorite sites. The water was really green during July. It was really a hot July. This pond is in direct sunlight. And now it's just getting clear. Like my filter media is kicking in. The uh, beneficial digestive microorganisms in the filter bed media. Um, I got some beneficial bacteria for filters from Japan and this pond is like a tribute and an honor to the Japanese koi culture, keeping culture. They contribute a lot to the beautification and the peace and serenity of the world with the koi fish that they um, bred and created from wild carp basically with some standout colorations that they isolated and bred and selected to bread and it's an art that they do and contribute. Japan is a very artistic nation in my opinion and I appreciate the art, the koi, the gardening, the bonsai them in China created to share with the rest of the world. Is, this is a uh, pond in construction. I have some distressed wood over there. That's one of my little bonsai endeavors right there. A white pine that I'm shaping. Sort of like Nigel Sanders. This is a, this is a power wire. I'm filming from my upstairs bedroom. But this is one of my little quartz bonsai endeavor trees down here with just a training, old training pot. I'm about to make a pot that I will in a bonsai pot. I, I got a picture of dead needle 
that these are some of my little Marai bonsai scars over here that I'm going to work with in the garage. That's an elephant ear plant. This is wood for a deck that's going to arbor hang this side of the pond. I have food growing, tomatoes, uh, some uh, Jamaican callaloo greens, one of my favorite greens. That's callaloo right there. That's callaloo. And I water the callaloo and the tomatoes from the pond. So that's some of the best water. It doesn't have chemicals in it. It's filtered, it's uh, aged, and it has living fish in it, creating fertilizer for the plants, which is the basis of aquaponics. Or growing food, fish, and using the water for the fish to to care for the food and sometimes feeding the food back to the fish. Like these koi eat greens. They eat watercress, they eat kale, they'll eat spinach, they'll eat callaloo greens. And that's one of the problems. They eat the plants in the pond and make it difficult to have aquatic plants. So this is the the fish had babies at our speed and we can see it, but the fish spawned this summer. I put mops and weighted them down over the rocks so that the eggs could adhere to the mops and hide from the big fish eating them. And there's a lot of baby goldfish, Sarasa comets, red comets, and Shubunkin mixes. That's a baby fish that was just born this summer, all of them. And it's kind of amazing, just two months ago, there are little specks in there that I couldn't hardly see. And now they're as big as they are within two months of spawning. There's koi in there, and there's little decorative goldfish. And this is really excellent quality water, real healthy. And when you're breeding fish, you want um, algae in your water for the food cycle. For the little aquatic microorganisms to eat. And then the baby fish eat the little micro. And that's a koi right there with interesting color pattern. pattern. Like a Ferrari boy. Or a mix up, mix up pretty fish of no, no um, breed, no um, way called stabilized breed. With Seven Thunders, this is my koi decorative goldfish, Rasta Common Goldfish Pond. Um, this is a shot from my upstairs bedroom windows. Too bad is my power cable comes across here. Maybe I can get DTE to move it to the corner of the house instead of right under my bedroom window. So this is a four and a half foot deep, uh, 21 foot long, 14 foot wide pond that I dug by hand. Last winter the koi and goldfish overwintered, 33 below zero Fahrenheit temperatures here. The pond froze about six inches thick of ice and the fish came through with flying colors. I had one kohaku met his untimely demise because it drifted into the, one of the shallow ledges that froze solid and it didn't make it. But all the other fish made it through and now they've reproduced spawn and there's a lot of little baby fish in there. I'll show in the next shot. The seven thunders is growth is survival. Keep growing organic, stay positive, and I hope to see you in the light.